Yusuf Islam, who is better known by his stage name Cat Stevens, has come to Turkey. The legendary artist is here to promote the Turkish translation of his debut book, Why I Still Carry a Guitar. We had a chance to sit down with the recording artist about his spiritual journey, life and more. Yusuf, thank you very much for taking the time to join us at TRT World. I know you're a very busy man. I told some of my friends and colleagues that I'd be interviewing you, and one phrase I kept hearing was, he's a cool cat. Yusuf, you're a legend in the music world. In Turkey, there's a saying that the real measure of wealth is not money, but how many people speak well of you. Considering that, do you feel wealthy? Well, I feel actually more poor than wealthy because when I look at myself, I see my, we my weaknesses. And so from that point of view, I'm very grateful for, for, the, for, the, uh, for the love that comes to me. But when I look at myself, I have to criticize myself just to know that, you know, that, that there's only one who is rich, you know, and, um, and that is God. So I try to keep myself in order. Your debut book, Why I Still Carry a Guitar, has been translated into Turkish. I actually read this version, and some of the bits when I was reading, I actually felt like I was reading Rumi. Yusuf, what is the core message you try to give with this book, and why do you still carry a guitar? The book, in a way, is um, an attempt to fill in some of the gaps, which, um, and in a way, clarify the picture which has been made very blurry by the press generally, because obviously people don't have time to go into details. You know, when you're reading the paper or watching the news or something, it's a very quick snip of news. So I wanted to give more detail about the background. And you know, what it tells you very briefly is about my first dream, you know, which was basically the American dream, you know, to be rich and be uh, wealthy, to have girlfriends and lots of money and, you know, good looking. And so uh, all that stuff, and then I was a singer, and that was the kind of epitome of um, the success of me achieving all that. But that only happened for one year, and then I was in hospital, <laughs> and that was like fate said stop, you know. And at that point, I realized that life is very fragile, and um, I wanted to know more, because I was not secure. Because I don't know, if I'd have dropped off the planet, what would happen to me. So that kind of, I tried to give the beginning of how I started to get on my journey, and my journey towards, you know, finding out about the truth. What is the truth? Um, and what happens after death? You know, this is a big question. We all human beings have got to solve that question. Um, and so it tells you also that I went through certain religions to study Buddhism and, you know, I, I already understood Christianity and Judaism from the Bible. Um, but when I got the Quran, that was really where I became fully educated, spiritually educated, because I had all these pieces um, of religion, which all, they, they sounded pretty good, you know, many of them were saying nice things and, and very sensible and reasonable and inspiring things. But Islam just brought everything together. We live in a world where Muslims are under intense scrutiny. You say that art can play a healing role in tackling those misconceptions and help in building bridges. Can you touch on that further? Art has the ability to express what's in our hearts and what our spirit uh, symbolizes. I think, I think it's a very natural, one of the most personal and natural instincts is to express yourself artistically. Children do it, you know, very naturally, and they'll do a splash of red, you know, a splash of black, whatever, however they feel. And the artist just develops that to another higher degree. Um, so I think that, um, you know, when I say it builds bridges, uh, you know, it, it helps. The fact that I left the music business to become, you know, or to learn Islam and to fulfill my my life, to get a life. Um, when I picked up the guitar again, it was really after 9-11. Because everything, I mean, actually it was Bosnia, you know, that was pretty 
earth-shaking for me to see what was going on <coughs> um, in the world when there was this genocide and nobody was doing it. That was one big um, message. And then things just got worse and worse. I thought, well, how, how bad can they get? And I realized, especially from Bosnia, that when the people have nothing, sometimes that's the moment when you need to sing. When, when you're being, when you're down, when everything is against you, that's an inspirational moment to contact, to, to connect your feelings with others. And I think that was the beginning when I realized that I need to build bridges again because people were looking at Islam and I, in the beginning, I thought that I was listening to certain voices that were very conservative. And yeah, I had some doubts, you know, about how to use music because the music business is pretty corrupt, you know, pretty degenerate. So therefore, it was natural to move away. But coming back didn't mean I had to marry rock and roll again. I didn't have to become a rock and roller. That was never my music. But I knew that if I came back, a lot of people would start listening. And you know, when you go to some of my concerts now, if you go to Germany, some of the places, you'll see a big like German with a big beard, and he's crying. You know, he's crying. Oh, that's, that to me is very, very valuable. The peace train sounding louder, glide on the peace train. Mm -hmm. Come on, peace train. It's peace train, holy roller. Everyone jump up on the peace train. Mm -hmm. Come on, peace train.